Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is the Ultimate Torque Bug 3.0. All right, the time has come. This frame has had a couple days to cure up, so the paint is as ready as it's ever going to be. Well, I guess I could let it go for another couple days and it would be even more ready, but it's as ready as I'm going to let it be because... If I scratch it, I'm going to touch it up. That's all there is to it. Uh, that's why I didn't clear coat or try to do anything too, too fancy. I want to ride this thing. I want to enjoy it. And who knows? It might even end up with a different fork at some point. That said, that's the first thing I'm going to be putting on. I just have to find the neck bolt. Here we go. It's got a couple bearings. I know that these bearings were replaced not too long ago, so I'll just clean them off with a little bit of a lubricant and make sure that they're in working order yeah they're already going to check out so i'll clean them off and get this thing put together coffee cover bearings lube that's all I grab a rag, I'll wipe them down. There we go. Name of the game here. Well, I didn't just sit there and douse them with the spray. I kept this mainly to the outside of the bearing, and then I wiped the surfaces clean very quickly that way it's not just going down inside and working whatever grease is left in these out of them I'm gonna take some red grease and press it in the best I can around the faces and I'll hope that some of it finds its way inside. I'll wipe them off one more time and then install them. Might not be new, but they'll get us through. It's a dirty little job as much as it is a dirty little trick, but that bearing is going to be a okay. At least through the summer and maybe we'll take a look at it before we put the bike away at the end of the season all right get the fork on some of this stuff is going to move along a little faster i was just using this as an example as to why i'm not overly critical when assembling these things I mean, these little pitons are literally designed to bounce off of this stop. So, we're going to have surface to surface contact just by mechanical default. I'm going around with a clean rag, which is just a cut off sleeve from a sweatshirt and wiping off my fingerprints so that 
any of the oils and contaminants don't just start eating at the paint. If I scratch anything while doing my installation, I'll come back with, you know, a rag over the tire or a piece of cardboard for like a deflector and we can just touch it up. All right. It'll blend in fine. We're the only ones that'll know. Let's get this thing on wheels. I think I'll toss that front on, pull out the jack, get the rear up, and try to do that without scratching up those beautiful hangers. The front should go without a hitch. Well, looks like I was able to do both of those right off the cooler. I don't have anything tight. It's just in place where it needs to be. Next, I might as well we'll do the seat in the gas tank because once we have our engine in it's going to make this clearance tighter getting up to those things so just like they came off they should go back on I don't think the paint changed the location of our holes at all Originally, on this seat, I was going to shim it with some washers. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let the wood flex a little bit. And I'm going to go in on my bolts evenly, one at a time. So, kind of juggle the threads so that... I don't pull in any one specific point too much at any given time. We want to come straight down. Since I'm at a total of six bolts on the bike already, I just went ahead and tightened them up. The neck, the front wheel, in the rear wheel are 14 and 17 millimeter swish I was 7 16 on these three underneath I turned the mini bike upside down on a chair now I'm going to install the kickstand. This particular doodle bug is a DB30S. This would have been a dirt bug racer. Baja Motorsports. These were a handsome frame. Not sure on the initials. But at least somebody was proud enough to own up to it. Yeah, buddy. We're finally standing on our own. Next, you get that gas can on there. This tank, super easy to put on. The rubber mat goes in between. Studs go through the holes. Washers and nuts. After those bolts are tightened and the tank is sitting square where I want it, I put the band on it. 
I take my palm and I'm pushing upward on the bottom of the frame at the same time that I'm tightening this bolt that pulls the band in tight on the inside of the rubber hose and where we have this arc from the tank pulling from the top you get a substantial amount of torsion all right all right this is the big enchilada the huge hiccup the thing that I'm gonna try to fix when you have the riser plate and you put the jack shaft on top of it and the motor goes on top of that you end up with a tight spot in the back up under here so I tried a different couple lengths of bolt I like these ones better it's extremely hard to get this bolt in it doesn't even want to fit it doesn't matter if we take this off I don't want to take that off anyway so that means we have to somehow create a stud and nut situation where these have threaded inserts that's going to be a hindrance so on the back two I'm going to cut off the bottom of the insert and then I'll just drill those threads out so that I can pass a nut and a bolt through I'll be able to tighten from the bottom and on the top I'll just have to hold whichever head ends up in that direction see what happens here in case you get yourself in a similar bind this is an inch and a half micro disc for my Dremel that disc can only get you so far in before you bottom out on the plate you can see you only get about halfway through the material over on this side I have my hacksaw strewn through the plate with the blade facing that way so I'm doing a back cut you can see here through the bottom of that insert and it comes right off I might touch that up with some sort of a burr or something after I'm trying to leave these caps in here to retain that hole right there I don't want this whole outside diameter for my bolt to pass through I only need it to go through that and then to sandwich through everything else this stays in there that's great it's just like a spacer crunch time you know what I'm saying it's not going to go anywhere looking good this one's done I'm going to grab that other one keep it moving here it is with the inserts trimmed back I have some studs that I cut out of small thread these are going to go inside they'll get a nut 
a lock washer, and a washer. You can see how much space that takes up. That is probably pretty close to what the end of that insert was. By cutting that insert off, I can now bring these up and down a whole lot easier. If I had just drilled it out, it still would have caused me a few issues. So we're going to avoid it all together now. And hopefully I can set my studs, place the jack shaft in the middle, and then our engine on top. Our studs should come up through the block about well, yay high and we'll be able to get our nut and washer combo on there as well. I hope. Here's what I'm talking about about those inserts. If I had left those in and I lower this down inside I'm limited to how much I can move these. I have my studs sitting inside, a jack shaft on top. Next, I'll add my engine. Being able to manipulate those threads up and down made getting these nuts on a whole lot easier. We have plenty of room on both sides to be able to get in and hold those top nuts and tighten very easily from the bottom now. Up in the front, I added an oil drain extension. This is off a High Sun 196 off of a Coleman CT200U. So I've had that around and I save it for instances just like this. Now we clear the lip on the front of the plate so when we do our oil drops we're not going to be dribbling back down and all over the mini bike this should also help us to overhang this section here for the engine bolts in the front I didn't make any changes I just added the same washers that I used in the back. At this point, I'm going to make sure that I'm hand tightened all the way around. Out back at the jack shaft, we can now set up to make our trim and cut off the excess that we're not going to be using. I'm going to switch the collars out on the end for some split collars. Put one on this side and then I'll push it to one way or the other, make a mark, and I'll pull it apart, cut it, bring it back in, and reassemble it. I just added couple shims up against my pulley and my sprocket on this side gave myself about a half inch of overhang over on this side 
I marked for the half inch of overhang. I'm now going to pull out the shaft and cut my excess off. With everything on this jack shaft tightened in place, we have an extremely smooth pulley. To align the pulley with the motor, we're going to add a Torquezilla. With our Torquezilla and a fresh belt, I can now check for alignment. I can see that the back of this plate is pitched out ever so slightly. It's actually in this way. There's a little bit of play when you're tightening your block down. That goes for every installation you do. It's in the block itself. If I hold pulley with my thumb and right there you can see the motor moves. When it does that it pitches the driver so, right there, we are in too far this way. I start pulling it back, pulling it back, right about there. I look pretty darn straight. Now, I can tighten the engine down to the riser plate. Tighten down the back, we just reach a half inch wrench in on the top and I'm using a half inch ratchet wrench on the bottom. Very easy to get to all the nuts. In the front, you just get right on the half inch bolts. Everything's tight. Everything looks right. Now I'm going to tighten these two down. We're ready to mount it on the mini bike. It's just the four slotted holes that are in the riser plate and the four straight holes that are on the mini bike engine plate itself. I just have my four bolts finger tight that way we can move the engine forward and backwards next we can put on the chain make sure everything lines up there the 420 chain that's on here doesn't have a very long path of travel. It doesn't have to be overly tight. It shouldn't come off. And it should also roll pretty smooth once we have everything together. Now that we can go we got to stop. We'll be putting the brake on next.
I got some new hardware for my brake caliper. I got two matching bolts and three lock washers. That sets everything right where it needs to be. You can see the rotor in between the pads. And then ran my brake line gently underneath where my foot peg is going to go up along the frame out of the way of all of our mechanical parts up across the front again not under a lot of tension and up here to our handle reservoir Might as well toss these on. The hardest part about this was, uh, well, remembering which way the spring went. I have it set so that these go forward instead of back like they did stock. Could we have gone up and down? Yes, but I was trying to avoid coming up in this area next to the pulley when you sit on this mini bike your legs go like this and the front of your foot goes on the peg it's kind of a sporty thing but it feels okay uh you're about that far from the pulley I have a 10 tooth on this right now. If I end up switching to a 9 in the front, we're going to gain about a half inch that away. So we'll just play it and see how it goes. I just used some pins that I had. Uh, I can use something a little more robust down here and I will be I scratched a little bit of the paint off there but hey we gotta offset this sweet patina somehow let's just keep this thing going there's no bolt on the output shaft there's also no key yet Since we have brakes, we might as well try to get a grip on the situation. I'm going to be trying out these built well recoil grips from my friends at OMBWarehouse.com. I've installed something similar before, and I know they are very, very high quality. Look even has steps how to do it hmm these grips are for a twist job so the bigger one is going to replace this factory grip on this looks like a new twister that I got and the smaller of the two, which is the 7 8 is going to go on the mini bike. This is freshly painted. This is brand new. They recommend WD-40. Let's see what we got. All right. I don't think we're going to be needing that. It says, spray a two-second blast of aerosol. We'll pretend this is WD-40. Lubricant in the end of the clutch side grip. And then slide it on to the left bar end. So, 
make sure we don't mess this up it is that one and uh yeah i guess i'm gonna blast her for two seconds from this side try to catch them side walls and slide her on guys i'm probably more amazed than you are that absolutely worked i had to use two hands and kind of hold on to the bike lightly with one and then palm thrust the rest of it on there but i'm right there on the end and this thing is already stuck in place a little loosey goosey down here but i can tell we don't have a lot of time i'm gonna try to get this built well centered on the top of the bar and that's going to be my challenge on that throttle side over on the throttle side of things we're just going to open up the housing remove the twister itself and we're going to have to get that grip off there sometimes if they're new like this one you can work them off otherwise give them a slice with a razor blade that one will work ha 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 somebody lucked out today i was able to get my thumb in between the tube and the grip and it started to slide off now i can just grab the tube might not even have to here we go she's out of there we're going to be using this and keeping this for another time we're not going to just try to guess where this goes in order to make our built well face the same direction as the other one. To figure that out, we're going to install the tube and the housing on the handlebars. And then we'll install the grip. On the mini bike, I'm just setting the throttle where I'm comfortable with it. And I'm also paying attention to where our conduit is going to enter the housing. We don't want anything obscuring that. I don't want it coming back directly into this tube on the handlebars just as much as I don't want it angled up and out here. So, now that I'm comfortable with that, we know that all the way forward is the full throttle return position. We now have a much better idea as to where our logo is gonna go on this side. I'm going to lube up the inside of this grip the same way and I'll push it on. This one's proving to be a little more difficult. I'm halfway on. I know where the logo's at. I'm going to remove it and push it the rest of the way on over on the bench. All right, I'm trying to show you guys worst case scenario here. Even using a rag, this is hard to force on. Can it be done? Yeah, this is going to take a while. I think I have a solution. We have a hole on this side, 
and I think if I put my palm over this end and use the air compressor with the nozzle to shoot air in that end that the air will get between the grip and the tube and allow this thing to somewhat hover right down into position. I'll give it a shot. That worked like a charm. All I did I put the tube down on a flat surface. The grip was about halfway on. Grab my air chuck and I stuck that in the end here. When you're pushing down and you pull the trigger, that air is between the grip and the tube. That air breaks the surface tension. So when you're doing that action and you're pulling down, pop, it'll slide right on. Back on the mini bike in the full return position, we now have our logo facing in the same upward direction as the other one. These are some super classy grips, so you might as well take your time and do them right. They have just the right amount of chunk too. Gives it kind of a classic feel. I like it. Now that we have a working throttle, we can install a new cable, a carburetor, and a few other things. That's exactly what we're going to pick up next. Because as always, it's a work in progress. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Uh oh. I think I need more pressure. <laughs>